So there are really two kinds of guitar practitioners. The one group never really gets results or they get to a certain level and it seems like they can't go beyond that. It's like something is holding them back. No matter how much they practice, nothing happens. And then the other group who's getting consistent results. This is the 1%. This is the 99%. And the reason why there's such a huge difference in mass in the two groups is that the secrets to how to really develop are, you know, just intuitively over here. They just do the right thing. And we look at them and say, oh, aren't they talented, right? But it's not talent. It's just being lucky enough to just do the right things, practice in the right way, having the right kind of focus. But you don't have to wait for that talent, quote unquote, to appear. You can absolutely do the exact same thing. We can go into the heads and minds of these people and then draw out the different insights that we need to be able to do the same things. It looks like the same thing. They're practicing like we are. But in this video, I'm going to give you one of the key insights to how to develop a thing like alternate picking skills to the highest level. If you do this, you will progress predictably. If you don't, I'm, I'm, I'm guaranteeing you, you will never get to the level you want. And I say this a lot, but it's really true. So let's dissect what is absolutely and accurately going on in this segment over here, these people who actually get results. And one of the things that are the key things is that they turn everything into a project. You see, in the beginning, I was all over the place, right? I was practicing songs and chords, and, and that's a really good thing because you need to get started. You need to get some results, right? So you... Once you have one of these riffs down, you have something that you can play. So now I can say, I can play guitar, right? But then after a while, you just get, you, you can't progress beyond that if you don't start training instead of practicing. And training means that you do the same thing over and over again, right? If you want to become a good uh, football player, you can just go out in the playing field and just play football, right? It's the same thing with guitar. You can just play songs, right? You just play songs over and over again. And then, that's, you know, you'll develop. You will. But if you want to become a professional, if you want to go beyond the normal level of just having played a lot, right? You need to step up and start training. And that means putting the ball, if you want to train kicking, for instance, you dissect what is involved in the football, the, the game of football. Well, kicking with different parts of your foot, kicking long, kicking short, you know, kicking the ball to another opponent, right? Or not to another opponent, to another team player. That's what we want to learn. So we take out one thing and we start practicing kicking. So we take the ball, put it on the same place on the playing field every single time and we hit for the same target every single time. So you have the exact same challenge a million times, right? And then you start just practicing that over and over and over again. That's the key to mastery. Just playing guitar, playing songs, playing solos, copying others is not the key to mastery. It is actually very predictably the key to mediocrity. And there's nothing wrong with mediocrity if you just want a hobby going on and you really enjoy that. But when you are frustrated about not being able to develop a certain skill, you need to change what you're doing. It's not lack of talent, it's lack of strategy. And the one strategy, after you start training and taking something like saying, okay, alternate picking, what elements are involved? What are really the challenges? Well, first of all, we got like picking on one string, right? Picking on one string with accents, then we got, you know, adding notes to that, right? We got triplets, we got, you know, quadruplets or four notes, like, instead of, right? That's another challenge because the accents are in a different place. Then there's playing on one string, they're playing on two strings. Then there's the string shift. We got the up outside string shift and the inside string shift. Then we got the ascending and the descending and they all combine each other. If you start pulling it apart and start practicing each and every little element with focus and determination, I promise you, the whole thing will come together in the end perfectly. And the final insight here that you need to pick it, pick it apart and practice each element like we do in football, right? The kicking, the whatever, the running even, right? The dribbling, everything needs to be taken out of the context and put together. Then what you need to do every single time, this is a mindset change, is that you need to stop practicing just because you get inspired. The first thing that happens when 99% of people see a cool lick, a cool exercise, a cool program, is that they get inspired. So they start practicing it. Oh, let me see that, that was great. Like, 
right? And then you play that and you play that. And as you become better, this is what happens. You become better till you get satisfied. Oh, now I'm pretty good at it. I can get it right every third time. And you get that rush when you just get it right. But then you need to push for mastery. You need to, you know, play, play it more until you can play it without, you know, focusing on it. Because that's when you're free and can really start expressing yourself when you play music. Instead of just focusing on making the notes happen, right? But, so every time you see something that inspires you, the first thing that should happen instead of grabbing your guitar saying, hmm, is this something I want, really want to learn? Is this something I really want to master? And if the answer is yes... You make a project out of it. You think, okay, how much am I going to practice this? How many hours a day or minutes? How many repetitions will I put into this, right? Before I evaluate and say, okay, how good did I become? And over how long time? How many hours, minutes? How many repetitions? And, you know, do, is it one week? Is it two weeks? Is it four weeks? Before I go on to something else. See, what happens now is that you take one thing, one focus, and it might be just an element of alternate picking. Triplets on one string with the accents, right? And you sit with that. You use the metronome. You, you practice in front of the TV, talking to friends, whatever. That's all you do for a month. And it seems like, oh, Klaus, all the things I could be practicing as I'm playing three notes on freaking one string. Where's that going to get me? It's going to get you to mastery. And once you master one thing, any similar thing will be so much easier to learn. And the brain can't get that. This is intelligence. This is not lower level brain intuition. Because intuition say, okay, practice anything you're passionate about. And then once you get good at it, passion disappears. You're not inspired anymore because now you're good at it. Right? You just have the thing, or it seems like you could almost reach for it, and then you get inspired by something else. So you go from one thing to another. You need to create a project, because what happens in the brain then is that you switch from that what which you are passionate about, and then you become passionate about the project and what it might lead to. So you're not passionate about the lick anymore. You got this project lined out. Oh, what happens if I practice this for one hour a day and I put in 500 repetitions, you know, a day or a thousand or two thousand? What happens if I stack that over a month? What happens if I take the whole next weekend, just sit in my couch, just practicing that lick over and over again, right? While talking to my mom or whatever. What happens if I do that for an entire month? See, now you have a, a behavior that so totally separates itself from what other people are doing. They're just being led by their inspiration from one thing to another. You need to create a project. That's what brings you all the way to mastery. And I can guarantee you of this. Any person, guitar player out there that you admire for their skills did this. They might not have listened to my videos, <laughs> but they did so intuitively. They got curious. Okay, now I've been scrambling around from one area to another. What, ha what would happen if I absolutely took this simple little exercise and I pushed all the way to just outstandingly, amazingly good? What would happen? Everything changes. So from now on, what you need to do is you need to train yourself to avoid the impulse. You can do a little research, right? You can try out a bunch of things. You see a bunch of stuff on YouTube. You play around with it, right? You might do that for five, ten minutes a day and have fun. And then when you find something that really makes sense, you create a project out of it. And you should always have a project that you're working on. Always have one thing that you spend more time on than any other thing. And I don't mean a song. I mean a chord. I mean two chords that you play in a loop. I mean just one element of alternate picking mastery that you spend all your time on. This is crucial. So please, break that circle of always running for what's most inspiring and then start really focusing on one singular thing and creating a project out of it. Always have a project. Always. Okay, and in our new program here, Alternate Picking Mastery, the ultimate Alternate Picking Mastery training system, what we do is we dissect the technique bit by bit. We look at the right hand, we look at the left hand, we look at the specific challenges involved in what we see as one thing. We pick it apart and say, let's practice this, let's kill this little thing, right? Instead of fighting the big guy in the ring, who, a huge boxer, right? You try to, you can't, you can't win, you're too small. But if you fight, you know, 10 small, smaller guys, it's easy, just one at a time, right? You just knock them down. And it's the same amount of force that you actually are fighting, 
That is the secret behind how to crack the knot, how to kill this challenge of alternate picking. So go check out that program. But more importantly, don't ever not have a project that you're working on one thing and turn every source of inspiration into that thought instead of scrambling from one thing to another. See you in uh, the next video.